A very good morning to one and all present here. I am Harita Ashok to give you a brief description about the Embedded Systems Module 3 which is the Embedded Firmware Design and Development. So this slide it shows the topics that I am going to cover today. It will be introduction to Embedded Firmware first and then the two important firmware approaches. Coming to the introduction to Embedded Firmware Embedded means fixed firmly and deeply in a surrounding mass or something that is implanted. For example, an integrated circuit. An integrated circuit is formed when large number of chips are being embedded onto a single firmware or when the number of chips are being implanted. So I hope you people get an idea of what embedded is now. Firmware. A permanent software that is programmed into the ROM is called as a firmware, a set of programs. So this firmware is the master brain of the embedded system, similar to the CPU which is considered as the master brain of the computer system. This embedded firmware is responsible for controlling the various peripherals of the embedded hardware. That is, a particular hardware system will consist of large number of peripherals and all these peripherals are being controlled by the embedded firmware and it generates the responses according to the requirements that are being specified by the end user. And thus the firmware is considered to be the foundation or the master brain of the embedded system. Next is imparting intelligence to the firmware. Intelligence to the firmware could be imparted at any time and it is considered to be a one time process. At any time in the sense it could be done either once the uh, fabrication of the hardware is complete or it could be done at a later stage. So once the intelligence is being imparted the firmware could be embedded to the hardware and the functioning of the embedded product begins and the tasks and the functioning ends unless and until any kind of hardware breakdown or any kind of corruption occurs. In case of hardware breakdown, then that particular component that has, uh, that has been affected by the damage could be replaced and the functioning of the system could be resumed. And if it, it is in the case of an firmware corruption or damage then the firmware has to be removed from the embedded product and it has to be reprogrammed and reloaded and only then the system could resume back to its normal functioning. So this is considered to be the only disadvantage that is found with the embedded system is that once the firmware that is being programmed it is being embedded to the system any kind of alterations will not be promoted. In case any kind of alteration has to be done, the firmware has to be removed from the system, it has to be reprogrammed from the first. Next, an embedded system can be considered to be adaptive or non-adaptive. This could be explained with the help of an example. Let us consider a young newborn baby. The newborn baby on seeing fire for the first time could be fascinated by its illumination, it may try to touch it. But once it has sensed the heat, the very next time if it sees fire it understands that it gives you heat it gives you hurt it makes you wound so the baby doesn't touch it so this is what is adaptive means we human beings are considered to be adaptive in nature that is we learn from our mistakes we up we update our memory whenever we create a mistake and we try not to repeat them again so previously developed embedded systems are considered to be less or non adaptive that is, they could not understand from the mistakes that are being created because once the firmware is being programmed, they are placed in the non-alterable memory which is the ROM. But nowadays, the embedded products that are being coming into the market are considered to be more highly adaptive. That is, they use parameters and these parameters could be configured whenever any kind of alteration is to be done. For example, the flash memory that is these parameters are placed in alterable memory. And next would be the designing of this embedded system. So designing requires, that is the very first stage is the sorting down of the requirements that we need to produce our embedded product. So whenever a person comes and uh, requires any development of an embedded system, he or she sorts down 
all those things that are required for his product to be done so these requirements it could be descriptive it could be made it could be made more descriptive with, with the help of uml diagrams it helps us in making the decisions easier these requirements are then converted into a programmed model these programmed model are done by using programming languages that could be understood by the controller and the end users finally this programmed model is then implemented that is the tasks and ac actions are to be function which is the using that is the functioning of the system these are some of the examples of embedded systems which is the washing machine coffee vending machine and the air conditioner all these three machines have their own functionalities that is the washing machine is done only is being used only for washing the clothes the coffee vending machine is used for producing coffee and the air conditioner it is used for cooling so these are being done are being used for their own requirements and are being done in such a way that they perform only those functions so this forms embedded systems and i hope you people have got a clear idea of what an embedded system is and embedded firmware is the next video i shall be explaining about the two different techniques or the designs in creating a firmware thank you